So hello everyone and welcome to How Good Are Iroyachi as a gameplay unit, which of course I do for every single new released unit, but this game is going to be something special about this video in that, well, the, 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 there's like a lot of drama about Iroyachi shipping, so don't actually talk about that in the comments, like either for or against, because you're just going to get people angry, so just don't... This is a gameplay video, okay? We're gonna talk about gameplay today. So just gameplay-wise, how good are they? So of course they are, as most people all know, they are an ultimate type. Ultimate type basically just means they have some sort of godly Madoka powers and stuff, uh, like ultimate Madoka. But what does it actually mean for gameplay? Well, first off, because they have ultimate type, it means they have pretty good uh, MP generation for attacking and getting it. Not quite as good as Magia type, but almost the same. So they just have a bit better uh, Magia generation than some other characters might, but not by a whole lot. It's mostly still rather normal. But they also have something called an EX build that I'm going to get to way later. But for now, let's just ignore the EX. Let's just act like it doesn't happen and just evaluate them just as a unit by themselves. So, of course, they are a light type with two Excelis, two Blasters, a Charge Disc. We're going to see something like this in just a second, but for now, we're just going to ignore that and just look at the stats. And we see that they are pretty much hyper-aggressive with 9600 attack, that's quite a lot. However, they have some of the worst defensive stat in the entire game. This might be like number 3 lowest defense or something in the entire game uh, next to Toka. In fact, I'm gonna, I can pull it up in now. So we see that Toka as a 4-star, only you get a natural 4-stars now. Uh, a natural 4-stars, Toka has 6,000 defense. Then we scroll down a bit, we see 6,300. Uh, that doesn't count, that's a natural 3-star. Next natural 4-star is Seer, is Nagisa with 6,500, somewhere around there. Then another 6,500 is uh, Mami, then 6,600. Uh, on Tsukasa, but also she doesn't count because she's a natural 3-star. Uh, then we get to Swimsuit, Homura, and then after this we would have um, Ultimate Iroyachi. So they're not quite, okay, they're not quite the third lowest, but they are very, very close to the very bottom of defensive stats, and that's not very good. We also see that their HP this is alright, but also nothing too amazing. So overall, they are rather squishy and do die rather fast. There's also stuff that I notice in PvP when I play against them on the Japanese server, that they do die rather fast. But at least they have some stuff that will help them with that. But for now, we will need to look at something else, which is their personal. It's terrible. Moving on, we also see that, of course, uh, they have a connect. And before I go uh, on with the connect, I want to do some comparisons here, uh, which will also include the connect. But first off, we can of course look at other ultimate character that there is, which is Ultimate Madoka. And of course, we see that these stats aren't actually too dissimilar. These, uh, of course, Idachi has like 500 more HP, does have like 3,000 less HP. Did I say HP before? 3,000 less HP, 500 more attack does Idachi have, but. Marokami does have noticeably more defense, almost 8,000, which is like about like 1,200, 1,300 defense small, which is quite a lot. So it seems like uh, Marokami is a bit more defensively oriented than Iriachi, who is a bit more offensively oriented. And then if we look at the connect, of course, I've already talked about Ultimate Marokami before, but just to very quickly uh, uh, talk about what I said before, is that it's a lot of stuff is very defensive on the connect, very defensive connect with like one... Um, aggressive component to it. EX skill also very defensive. So overall, Ulimarika very, very defensive on all fronts. Um, but of course, by being so defensive towards other characters as well, makes it so your damage dealers survive and kill stuff. But then we also have another character that I want to uh, compare that to, which is Sakurako, because as it turns out, these two characters, or three characters even, are very close to each other. You see, this they, they also are light element with the same disc set, and the idea behind their spreads, stat spread is pretty much the same. They have something more offensively oriented, although I guess uh, Sakurako being balanced has a bit less attack, but way more uh, defense, way more, like 2,200 more defense, oh my god, that's way more, and even more HP. So, Iriachi does have a bit more H attack, but apart from that, oh my god, Sakurako has way better stats, which is absurd actually. Uh, but then we look at the connect and we see that Sakurako's connect and we're gonna remember this 40% attack up 70% chance to crit and one defensive option on it That is not always useful, but sometimes because it's a chance to evade and I mean they have to get attacked first So it's not always useful, but sometimes and then it can be pretty good uh, And then we'll take a look at Iriachi's connect and what do we see? 40% attack up 70% chance to crit and one defensive option that is sometimes good I mean they have to be not full HP and actually take damage afterwards 
so that it actually prevented a death. So sometimes it's really good and sometimes it does nothing. And it's basically the same connect. It's basically the same connect. By the way, the reason why this connect is like this is because this is basically a combination of both of Iroha's and Yachio's connects. Which I think is a pretty cool uh, way of flavoring the entire thing that the ba this, un this unit really does com uh, combine both Iroha and Yachio in uh, their connect as well. So it seems like so far, stat-wise and connect-wise, it's looking alright because Sakurako's connect was pretty good actually, really good for uh, offensive uh, capabilities and also having that defensive option is also really nice to have sometimes. So connect looking good, stats... I actually really don't like the stats of uh, Irachi mostly because that defense is abysmal. And then we say, okay, but th because they ultimate type, they actually have somewhat decent uh, magia generation. And I mean, they do have two Excel discs. So I guess they're gonna get to magia. And from, I have her on JP as well. So, and I, I've been using it quite a bit. Uh, and I can tell you that, yeah, she does get to magia rather often, even on a blast team. Like I played her together with two blast gorillas. And I still, on longer quests, like, I say longer quests, like five turns or longer. That's like a really long quest. Uh, they do get to Magia fairly nicely, fairly decently. And when you then look at their Magia, so this is a Magia that we're actually gonna going to see used, unlike if we had, for example, the Magia of a Blast Gorilla that's never going to use. And what does the Magia do? It's an AoE damage at the regular 360% or 370%, so somewhere around there. Uh, and then we look at what it does. It gives attack up to everyone at Magia level 5, 40% to all allies. That's really, really good. Damn, that's really good. What does it also do? Damage up versus witches. Around 25% at Magia level 5. Okay, um, sure, I'll, I'll take it uh, better than nothing. Um, but I'd still much rather this be something else because... How often is this going to be useful? I mean, when it is useful, like imagine there's like a really tough EX quest where that is actually against the witch. This would be really good. Although somehow, in my, the, the thing is, the, the the most difficult EX challenge quests when you fight a big boss are usually against Uwasa and not against witches. Interestingly enough, um, so this is actually not qu quite as useful as damage up against Uwasa would be, which would have made more sense by the way because they're like the Uwasa hunters, whatever. However, there are also the other second unit in the entire game that can revive an ally, with the other unit, of course, being regular Iroha. So being able to revive an ally is really good, but also that's also something that's not going to come in handy too often. And from experience, I can say most of the time when you revive an ally, since you revive an ally during your turn where you don't get to actually heal them correctly during that turn, because you have to wait until the next turn until you can actually heal them with a connect maybe, uh, which might not even happen. Because the thing is, since the enemy then gets a turn, usually what happens, the enemy just kills the resurrected character right again and yeah, it kind of feels useless. But hey, at least you got like one or two hits that went on uh, another character instead of the other characters that you have that might still be alive. So this, this revive ally might just mean like, hey, get some meat bag to put in front of your team to like get hit twice. And that saves the rest of your team a bunch of HP. Nice. That's not guaranteed to happen, but it does happen rather often from what I can tell. So overall the Magia seems decent. The attack up stacking is really good, but apart from the attack up stacking, the rest is really highly situational, but at least it can be quite alright. So my... The thing is, what you, what you would do, my recommendation for this, is that you play this either on a Blast Gorilla team, where you have the option on some turns where you get a bit more Excel discs to actually work towards an Excel, so that when, for example, you get into turns that get more difficult, you can pop the Magia in order to get the big damage up, or maybe even resurrect someone who died, and keep the pressure up, or you just play this on a straight up Magia team, where you can actually make repeated use of the attack up, and basically keep everyone at like close to 100% attack up, that's really, really good, and then you just need a bunch of sources for damage up, uh, magia damage, magia up, anything that isn't attack up to further stack your damage, and you're looking really good. So, overall, it, the, this set, this this entire character looks rather decent. A bit more offensively on the stats, uh, the connect is really good. Um, Although one part is a bit situational and the other part is random. But even so, overall pretty good. But nothing too spectacular. Nothing too crazy. However, you will remember that with Ultimate Madoka, it was basically the same thing. We also got through most of the um, how good is segment. And Madokami still didn't look that great. I mean, her Magia is one of the best Magia in the game for buffs, at least. And her connect is pretty decent. But her stats weren't quite good enough um, to 
to quite reach all the way up to like being one of the best characters. But then you realize, wait a second, there was the EX skill, right? And the EX skill was the one thing that pushed Madokami to be one of the best uh, characters in the entire game. Because having that permanent uh, regen is, well, it's nice. But more importantly, on any quest where there are status ailments, status and resistance up passively on everyone 30% even if Madokami dies is actually pretty darn busted. Especially because there's a lot of really hard EX challenge quests that kind of are designed around your characters getting uh, inflicted with status elements at some point. Like there might be, I, I can think of a lot of EX challenge quests that are really really difficult on the Japanese server where most characters on the enemy team they just had something like poison on uh, attack or uh, burn on attack or even bind on attack or they would just start the turn by using charm on every single one of your characters like they they use status elements a lot uh, and they're all at like 100% so being able to reduce that is absolutely great and can secure you a victory and that was why ultimate madoka was so important the question now becomes the reason why i bring this up is this is what made ultimate madoka so amazing does it do the same for iriachi so what is the ex skill for iriachi the ex skill by the way in case you uh, you just don't know what that is yet, it's basically just a passive bonus that this character does at the beginning of the game to everyone or themselves if it's specified that way. So if you just have Irohan Yachio in your team, then when you start the battle, every single character on your team is going to get, uh, in this case, a defense up effect, which is stronger at 4 slot if they have 4 slot uh, Iroyachi. And even if Iroyachi dies, that effect remains. So it can't be removed like that, but it can be removed with debuff removal, uh, with buff removal. Although almost no one, nothing in the entire game actually does that. And interesting enough about this is that it also gives an effect just to Irohan Yachio themselves, which is negate critical hit. Uh, in case you don't know about what exactly this does is, it basically treats an attack that was supposed to be critical as if it wasn't a critical hit. So for example, if the enemy has a damage bonus of, let's say, plus 150%, and then they were to crit, that plus 150% would go to plus 250% because crit just adds a plus 100% to do the damage. So, but with negate crit, it would just stay at plus 150%. It just acts like it, it's just, it just acts as if it wasn't a crit. So this means that, if, at least for crits, Iriachi are at least protected against that, which makes it a bit harder in mirrors to one-shot in Iriachi because they are immune to crits twice, and I mean, it doesn't matter if it's 2 or 3 or 10 or 20 because there's they're not gonna survive more than two hits anyway so there it doesn't matter that it negates two critical hits because like i said they're not gonna survive more hits than that anyway however the more important part is it gives defense up and basically the entire viability became okay, maybe not the entire viability but most of their viability now depends on how good their defense up is because so far they're basically a Sakurako that is squishier, but has a better magia. That's basically so far where we are. We're basically at Sakurako with that is squishier, dies faster, but has better magia. That's basically where we're at, okay? Just to recap, recap where we are. So what is exactly does the 35, if you are talking about force out effect, 37.5% defense up on all, on all allies, how good is that? How good is that? Well, first off, uh, I believe they kind of factored that in into why they gave her so low defense. It's because they say, well, she comes with 37 if you have a force slot. I'm just going to go on the force slot. Actually, no, I'm going to go on one slot because it's easier to do maths with. If you're on one slot and she has 6,784 defense, she kind of already gets the 30%. So, so she's actually at like 8,000 something uh, defense, 8,500 or whatever defense. So it's actually not that bad because she gets that defense from her passive. But the thing is, every single other character on your team gets that as well. And even the Sakurako gets that 30% and has way like over, like almost almost 12,000, maybe like 11,500, 11,600, something like that um, a defense as well, which is way more than uh, Irohan Yachio has. Same with uh, Ulrich Madoka, who also gets way more defense because, and this is basically what I'm trying to get at, and what is basically um, the big takeaway is, if you have low defense, buffing defense by a percentage amount doesn't do a whole lot. 
This doesn't just apply to Ida and Yacho themselves having no defenses, also what other characters. Let's say you play, for example, them together with a bad character like Toka, for example. So you have them together with Toka on the team. Toka only has like 6,000 defense. You put uh, her next, you put Iroyachi next to them. She's still a bad character, but now she has 6,000 and then 30% more defense. That's like pff, still nothing. It's like 8,000. That's still less defense than Sakurako. It's still way less defense than Sakurako has normally. And it's not a good sign when uh, Toka, with a big defense buff, I mean 30, 30 to 37.5 percent, that's quite a big defense buff, right? And it's still way less defense than a regular Sakurako has without any defense buffs. That's not a good sign. That's really not a good sign at all. Um, however, just imagine if you were playing a big tank, or you both have multiple characters on your team who have a lot of defense, then a defense buff like this would actually be really, really good. So to put everything into one big conclusion, don't pl don't play this on a team with squishy characters and expect them to become tanky. Defense up does not make squishy characters tanky. If you have, for example, a Ren who has also very little defense, don't expect this EX skill to make Ren tanky. It doesn't. Ren probably dies in exactly the same amount of hits as he was before. Like if you have a Ren that in mirrors dies in two hits, and you put Iroyachi next to that, that Ren still dies in two hits. It's not gonna change anything. However, if for example, you had a Kokoro with Defense Memoria, uh, with like the, the game memo, like the actual memo uh, memoria that has Kokoro's face on it, uh, or if you play the guy with a Kirika, uh, or a Momoko, for example, if you wanna meme a bit, uh, if you like play that with really high defense characters, then this actually is really good. On the Japanese server, there was actually a meme where you play her together with Hachikuchi, because Hachikuchi has a really, really high defense, and by combining that with Iroyachi, you would be able to push uh, the defense of Hachikuchi really, really, really high. So basically, her EX skill, well, at least it does something. It still does something for squishy characters, but it's not a game changer. I would say that when Ultimate Madoka's um, EX skill is important, like when you're playing on uh, these really hard EX challenge quests and you like have some of your team now dodge status aimants because of that, that is game changing. But Iroyachi making squishy units just a tiny bit less squishy, it's not game changing at all. And that's basically why usually people say that Iroyachi, she's still really high up in tiers. I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm saying so much stuff that makes it sound like Iroyachi isn't that good. She's still really high. Um, I don't make tier lists, but she would be really, really high tier um, because she is overall still a decent unit and having the EX skill is better than not having it. And as I mentioned before, she's still like a Sakurako with a better Magia, uh, but more squishy. But if you were to do play on a tank setup, that's amazing. So how do you actually use Iroyachi? Well, that's up to you. You can actually just still play her on a team with squishy characters, um, like a Rin, for example, or like a Toka, and then just say, you know what, I don't care, I'm just gonna give them attack up, I'm gonna give them crit, and hope they just kill my opponents before they die. Because if my opponents die before I die, <laughs> then it doesn't matter if they're squishy, right? That's basically the idea. Or you play her on a Magia team that tries to stall. Because if you play her on a Magia team with stalling, not only will you have the attack up, you will have the capability of healing, you will have the capability of reviving if your stall goes a bit wrong and someone dies. That's really good on that in that sense. Also, if you're playing a stalling team, probably you have Magias that heal AoE. So for example, you have, or just regenerate like Kako's Magia, for example. Then you could actually revive someone and then play Kako Magia to give them uh, regenerate and then they would regenerate right away. So you can play them on a stall team uh, to give them that extra uh, longevity. And to put it all to close, because I've talked so much about this, just to put it on a point, Iroyachi is a decent unit that is more offensively focused than the other ultimate option that we have but is squishier themselves, dies really fucking fast actually, even with the negate crit, even with the defense up, still dies really fast, um, but has a good connect, has a good magia for stacking it through multiple turns, not quite as good as Ulemarica, but still a good magia, and excels on tank setups. That said, of course, tank setups aren't as effective as damage setups uh, are usually. 
So yeah, that's basically that, but of course there's a bunch of other stuff in the gacha as well. There, there's a perfect photo for us, which we have right here, which does give anti... It's an active, by the way, uh, even though it says here it's a passive. It's an act, it's an active, so don't get that wrong. Uh, which does give anti-evade 100% and blast damage up 20% for all allies. That is actually really good. Um, However, if you're trying to play this on a Blast team, it's probably still better to take other Blast actives because the thing is, if you're playing a Blast team, chances are you want to get a Puella Blast combo. And if you're getting a Puella Blast combo, of course, there's only one character getting that Blast combo. But hey, at least if, uh, if you, for example, you put this on Iriachi and then someone else has a Blast combo, let's say you play a Cool Homo together with that, and then Cool Homo gets a Puella Blast combo, you can still activate this and give the Cool Homo the 20% Blast damage up, but if you're using this on someone who is a Blast Gorilla, like, like, like let's say you put this on a Cool Homo herself, it won't do as much as if you just used a better Blast damage up. However, anti evade on everyone is really good. Uh, I don't think, I don't think, that is this a three turn active in mirrors? I don't, I don't know. Actually, I think this might be a three turn active on mirrors, which would make this a good mirrors um, active to have. But overall, it's decent. It's decent. It's definitely decent. There are some EX challenge quests that are going to happen in maybe a month or later, where um, you're going to see what Hikaru does in EX challenge quests. Because every single EX challenge quest that has a horse, the horse will use guaranteed evade on herself every single turn and she will have status aiming resistance. So having something like this is really good for those EX challenge quests. Nice. This one's decent. This is, this is one of those memorials that you don't automatically include on every team, but it's always really nice to just have around. And then we have this one, the wings from before again, or those feathers from before. It's... it's I, I don't even care, dude. It's whatever. So yeah, that was that. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time. Hit that subscribe button.